In my last Arduino 101, I talked about adding an LED and making it blink. This week, we're going to talk about adding a button. Okay, so let's get started building this circuit. I'm going to use a proto shield this time because it makes developing new circuits and trying new things out just so easy. You can get one of these in the maker shed or you can get them in the Arduino starter kit. All you have to do is put it together and then it just plugs right in on top of the Arduino. Now we talked about not using pin 13 for the LED. Um, the reason we're not going to use pin 13 is because what if you want to add more LEDs or you need pin 13 for some other reason. Um, pin 13 has a built in 1K resistor. Um, so if you don't use it for your LED, you need to add a resistor. Pretty simple. So let's use pin 10. I'm going to go ahead and add the LED up here on top of the breadboard. I'm going to put the positive lead in the top row and the negative lead in the bottom row. Or I should say the row beneath it. So I'm going to plug it in like this. Sometimes it's really nice to uh, just grab it and bend it down. That keeps it nice and flat on the board and uh, doesn't really hurt the LED. Okay, so Let's go ahead and add the resistor and the jumper wires that we need. I've got a 220 resistor here, and I can actually just go right from pin 10, which is right here, over to the positive lead of the LED, and use that as a jumper wire. Then I need to just connect the negative end of the lead to ground. And there happens to be a ground right here on the uh, proto shield. It's the second one down. I don't even need that long of a wire. There we go. And that's it. Here, I'll bend this down so you can see it a little better. So this is connected to pin 10, and the negative is connected to ground. That's it. We're all done with the LED. Let's move on to the button. All right, so we're going to add the button to the breadboard right there in the middle. And now we have to hook it up. And we want to hook it up to pin 2. Now, it seems like it'd be easy to just, hey, the button has two leads on it, we'll hook one to pin two and one to ground. That's not really going to work. What we want to do is digital read pin two. And what that means is we want to look to see if pin two is either high or low, whether it has low zero volts or high five volts. So the way we do that is we're going to connect. Here's the button, here's, here's the row on the breadboard. Now all these are connected, all these little pins are connected horizontally, or actually in the video vert vertically. Um, so we're going to connect one of the leads of the button to, the, to 5 volts. This rail right here on the proto shield is uh, 5 volts. We're going to connect the other lead of the button to two things. The first is we're going to use the resistor and we're going to connect it from the other lead of the button to ground. And I'll explain why we do that later. Actually, maybe I'll even use this ground back here. That might illustrate it better. Okay? And in the same row on the breadboard, we're going to connect that lead of the button to pin 2. Right there. Okay, so how does this work? What's happening is we're going to do a digital read on pin 2. And what that means is we just want to see, is pin 2 high or low? High meaning 5 volts, low meaning 0 volts. Well, if we don't press the button here, the electricity from pin 2 is flowing through this wire, and then it gets to the button, and it can't go anywhere because the button's open. Um, but it can travel through the resistor and to the ground. Actually, it can go this way. But that's another story. Um, so when there's no pressing, when you don't press the button, you are going to read zero volts because it goes to the ground. So the electricity goes in the wire, resistor, ground. Okay. Now, what happens if we press the button? Well, we press the button, we make a connection. Think of it from this corner to this corner. We're connecting. So the electricity, when we read pin two, is now going through this wire. It hits the button. It makes the connection through the button and hits this wire, and 
this is connected to 5 volts. Well, the positive 5 volts in pin 2 gives the signal of high to the Arduino. Now, the big question is, why doesn't the electricity always go through this resistor? Well, the answer is electricity is lazy. It wants to find the path of least resistance. So, when I press this button down, all the electrons are saying, hey, we can just go from, pin, from 5 volts into the pin. Real easy. We don't want to go this way. It's too much resistance, too much work. When I let go of the button, the electricity gets clogged up and says, well, there's nowhere else to go, so might as well go through this resistor. Okay, so this is a really simple button, and it doesn't address the issue of debouncing. Um, we will cover debouncing in another how-to. For now, don't worry about it. This is supposed to be a real beginner's how-to with the Arduino. All we want to do is be able to blink this light. So let's move on and connect this to the computer. All right, let's launch the Arduino application. Okay, so in the file sketchbook, examples, digital, button. That is the sketch that we're going to open and talk about today. Okay, so here's the Arduino sketch. Let's go over this line by line. The first thing you'll notice is the first line here says INT LED pin 13. And if you remember, we decided not to use 13. We decided to use pin 10. So let's go ahead and just make that change. Pin 10. The next line is input pin 2. We did use the input pin 2 for our button. And the eval uh, this is a value that we're going to use to store whether pin 2 is high or low. Okay, the next line is your setup. Again, this runs once during the running of the program on the Arduino. And in here, what we're doing, the first line is pin mode, LED, pin, which we declared as 10, output. The next line, pin mode, input pin, which we declared as pin 2, as input. So it's pretty simple. The LED pin, pin 10, is an output pin. Uh, the input pin, pin 2, is an input pin. Pretty straightforward. Then here is the actual program that just loops over and over and over and, and uh, runs until uh, we basically turn it off because there's nowhere in here that we added a stop. Let's look at that real closely. Okay, so now let's look at the loop. This is the part of the program that runs over and over and over and uh, will never stop unless you actually tell it to stop. But we're not going to do that. So the first line of the loop is val equal digital read the input pin. And we had declared the input pin as 2. So it's digitally reading, which means basically is it high or is it low. Um, and it's telling it to store that information in the integer of val. So, if we're not pressing the button, we already know that it's telling pin 2 it's low. If we do press the button, it gets 5 volts and the pin will be high, so val will be high. So we're going to do an if statement here. And what this is telling you is if val is equal to high. Now notice something right here. It's not one equal. There's actually two equal signs there. Reason being, if you look at the line above, with one equal sign, you're telling the Arduino right here, val is the digital read of the input pin. We could also just be like val equals one or val equals whatever. But you're telling the Arduino that's what val is. Now, down here, we don't want to tell it that val is high. We want to actually use it as a comparator. We want to say if val is equal to high. Not it is high, is it equal to. And the way you do that is by using two equal signs in a row. So if the answer is yes, then we want to digitally write, which again is just high and low, or on and off, the LED pin low. So that basically means that if we're getting 5 volts in on digital pin 
two, turn the LED off. So if you remember the way we hooked it up, what that means is that if we press the button, turn the light off. Else, meaning, well, you know, when we're talking high and low, it's really only two choices. So is it high or is it low? So else, meaning it's low, digitally write the LED pin high. Now again, if we're not pressing the button, the light will stay on. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is, again, you always want to kind of just go through here and check real quick um, what board you're using and then the serial port. And again, I'm using the Dev TTY USB serial. So I'm going to select that, and then you can very quickly, if you want, click the play button. And what that does is check that your sketch is compiling properly. In mine, it gave me the answer, done compiling, and it tells you how big it is and everything's okay to go. Um, the next thing you do is click on this arrow right here. It says Upload to I.O. Board. Click on that and you will see the Arduino Transmit and Receive buttons start blinking. Okay, so the sketch is uploaded and you can see the LED which is connected to pin 10 is on. And the reason is because we are reading a low value on the button. So again, think of low as off. And right now the electricity is running through the wires of pin 2 and is connecting to the ground. So the Arduino is thinking uh, off or low. Um, and that's in the program telling the LED to be lit. Now, when we press the button, we're going to connect 5 volts to pin 2 because the electricity is not going to go through the resistor. It's going to go directly to the pin. Then the Arduino should read a high signal which we told the LED to go low and it works. So that's a simple on and off button. Hopefully that made sense. It gets a little strange when you start adding resistors and high and low and everything but it really isn't that hard. Again, there's great examples of this in the Arduino, uh, getting started with Arduino book and there's also you know a lot of information online and a lot in the make blog. So Next week, we're going to combine buttons and LEDs and make some more interesting, useful, fun stuff. See you next week.